Good morning then boys and girls, I hope you're all doing well. Today we've got a little bit of a day in the life, a little bit of a what's going on in the business type of video. Um, just a brief recap, I'm going to go over a few bits today. Um, if you are new, I'm an eBay reseller, I sell on eBay, now vintage as well, and I've got a brick and mortar physical high street shop next door to me. Um, I'll pop up on screen what that looks like. If you are new and you want to see how that journey goes for me, um, hit subscribe and hit the like button while you're there. Uh, it does go a long way, I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks for doing that if you did do it. Anyway, what we're going to do today, yeah, we've got loads of orders going out and we've got loads of other boring reseller bits I'm not going to bore you with, but I will be bored with, so that'll be fun. Um, and then we're going to go over this little trick that I've recently done that is seemingly too good to be true. Um, I don't know if anyone else gets this, but in business, when things start going up, I get a little bit like, oh shit, what's going to happen? Something's going to go wrong. But it's been about a week and nothing's gone wrong yet. And it's all been good so i'm going to share it with you proceed with caution i'm not an expert i'm an idiot with a camera who signed up for youtube and no one's asked any questions yet so i'm still on it but yeah i'm not an expert don't take my advice imagine i'm an idiot that doesn't know anything and take it with a pinch of salt but yeah we are going to go over it's working for me so i thought i'd share it with you lot anyway let's get into these orders so i've already printed the labels for these um these out we had 10 orders today nothing staggering but we got some nice bread and butter going out so we got these caramel walking shoes just basic bread and butter 15 quid i think we paid one or two pounds at the boot sale after shipping it'll probably be about eight or nine pounds profit and then we got these um samuel samuel boots samuel windsor boots is that right um like chelsea boots they're really nice really shiny if i can get the picture to load up We've had these sat in the shop, just like hiding up on a shelf for so long now. Um, we finally listed them last week and they sold pretty much instantly. So if you've got anything in your death pile, make sure to list it because that was £27 that has been sat in the shop, in the stock room for over a year. So if you've got stuff like that lying around in your death pile, get it listed. You just grind through it because so much money just wasted sat in death piles that it's just painful. Uh, and then we've got a Jules jumper, 17, 18 pounds. We've sold this three times now. This is the third time. It's sold it once, come back, sold it again, and it come back. So hopefully it stays gone this time. Um, some super dry cargoes. What did we get for them? 25. Paid about 10 on vintage for them, I believe. Um, and then we've got a rugby top. We paid two pounds at a car boot sale, and we got 19.99. That's a nice sale. All Saints jumper, we paid I think four pounds all in on Vinted and we got 18 back. Very nice. Diesel trousers. Um, these I thought when I bought them were jeans, but they're not. They're like a weird chino sort of, um, I don't know. They're like a weird material. So I just sold them cheap, 22 pounds, but I'm happy to see the back of them. Uh, another pair of cargoes. They're women's ones. They are 20 pounds. Pair of rugby boots from a car boot sale. I think we paid three pounds for those and we got 15. Not a great sale, but again, these are another ones that were sat out the back for so long. I've listed them and they've sold over the weekend. So yeah, definitely just start grinding through your death piles. Um, 22 pounds for a pair of cargo shorts. I don't know how far I'm going here. I'll stop at this one because this might be the last one. Um, 26 pound for a Gap jumper and some diesel jeans for 25 pounds. So as you can see, the total of that, I think was like nearly 200 quid, not quite 200 quid. Now I'm gonna just pop up on screen all my vinted orders. Um, I'm not sure how many there are. I'll have to go, I can't get it up on the computer, I don't think. Let me try actually. Right, I can get it up. Uh, hopefully you can see sort of what's going on here. We've got 30 pounds for some diesel jeans, seven pounds for a Paul Smith shirt that's been in the shop for so long, uh, or in the storage and the eBay for so long. Uh, trespass boots, 25 pounds. We paid like two pounds for these at a car boot sale. They were such a bargain. Uh, if it let me click on them, it'll load. Yeah, we literally paid two pounds. Um, and I, they, again, they've been sat out the back. And I literally listed them, I think, Friday. No, there we go. They're right. There we go. Yeah, just like walk in snow boots. But yeah, 27 or well, 28 pounds pretty much we got for those. Um, and that shipping doesn't have to come out of that. The buyer pays shipping on top of that price. So that's a really nice, like £25 profit out of those. Come out into the shop because the Wi-Fi is better. So Timberland boots, women's Timberland boots. We paid £1 at a boot sale, got 17 back for them. Um, I won't click on it because it takes too long to get in and out of. Diesel jeans, really nice, £25. We probably paid about £11 on vintage, so £14 profit on those. Weird fish jumper, Ralph Lauren, um, £38 on that one. 
I will show you this one because it is really nice. It's from The Hub, um, the vintage wholesale place I go to to do hand picks. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It isn't a great flip to it in all honesty. I've paid, well, I'm saying that, it's about £18 profit. You pay up at these um, these hand picks, but it is worth it because you do get good stuff. So £18 profit on this one it is really nice, like a hunting jacket. Yeah, we did well out of that one. G-Star jacket, uh, this is just a plain black jacket, but we got £25 for it, it come off of Vinted. Uh, yeah, just a nice flip, can't go wrong. Pair of super dry cargoes, Paul Smith jeans, Armani jeans, um, some super dry cargo shorts. This is a nice flip, I'll click on this and show you this. £35 we got and we paid £2 at the car boot sale. Here we go, we're loading up now. So yeah, it is a vintage Northampton Saints rugby shirt in double XL. Pick up your large rugby shirts. Pick up any rugby shirts you see. Just if they're cheap enough at the car boots, pick them up because there are some belters out there. This one's, I listed for 43. It's been up there since the middle of the summer. So it's been up for a good four or five months. I took 35 on it. Pick them up, pick them up, pick them up, pick them up all day long. They sell really good. Um, as long as they are a team, they're not like a youth team. They're actually an adults team. They should do really well. Um, yeah, highly recommend picking up your rugby shirts. A lot of people sleep on them um, or miss them or don't care for them. Because I got to this car boot late, I remember it. It was the first time I ever went to a place called Proctor's in Taunton. And I was about 20 minutes late and I, it was still there. So I'm there with another one. I've got another one of these somewhere listed. Um, so yeah, they stick around. They're not the first to go. It's not like football shirts when people see Manchester United pick it up. Rugby shirts, they seem to stick around for a little bit longer. And then we're down to the final two orders. So a pair of super dry uh, jeans. We paid probably five or six pounds, maybe seven pounds for these on Vinted. So just under a tenner's profit for those. And this was a Reebok jumper we picked up from the wholesale place. Um, about 15 pounds profit on that one. There it is there. Actually, if we come down here, I believe it's here in the shop somewhere. That one there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just a plain basic spell out jumper. This is what the shop is looking like for anyone that was wondering. Um, zoom out, there we go. Yeah, this is what it looks like at the moment. We are going to try and do some um, extension sort of things. I want to get a bigger one of these here, as you can see. This is quite flimsy. If I do this, I don't know if it's the camera's picking up, but it's kind of flimsy. And we've got loads of denim jackets on it. And I do fear that, that thing's going to fall off the wall one day and just rip the whole lot off. Like if someone yanks at this trying to get it off, if they're short and they're yanking at that, the whole lot could come down. So what I want to do is get a bigger one, a um, bit more sturdy and have it there and then have another one, but put it a bit higher then have another one just below it. So that way we can get a bit more stock in the shop because at the minute we're right there for a minute. We've got enough st stuff at the minute, but I am kind of growing this stockpile like rapidly um, and I am going to run out of space rather like sooner rather than later, probably in the new year, I'll need to do something about it. But yeah. So I'll give you a little update on the shop because I never really talk about the shop, but it is a big part of our business. Um, it is where we operate. Obviously, that's where I am now. It isn't, if anyone's ever ran a vintage, uh, any sort of shop, you realise very quickly it's not what it's cracked up to be. Um, sometimes you literally, I've had last week, the last two weeks, I think I've had, we've been open for, let me try and get my words straight. We've been open for 10 days in the last two weeks and I think I've had about seven zero pound days. So maybe not that many, maybe six, six out of 10 of those days have been zero, like literally like no sales. So it's okay because I can sell on eBay and Vinted and do these YouTube videos and it brings in more than enough for me to sustain the shop and the shop just pays for itself through the rent. You know, what, what does sell sort of covers at least half the rent every month. And then this is cheap storage. Basically that's how I work it out in my head anyway. Um, because in my local area, the shop prices aren't much different to like a storage unit. So it just makes sense to have a shop anyway. But if I was just to try and run a shop and that was it, I probably would have been out of business a long time ago. But yeah, we've been going two years now, officially two years. Um, October the 15th, we opened our first shop two years ago. So two years and about one month. It's going really good. Um, it's going better than I kind of thought, maybe. I don't know. I've this last year i've like doubled tripled but the, the first year was really bad for us and then we've done well this year obviously that kind of is how it is um in any career right you sort of get the more you do it the better you get so it's to be expected but yeah just wanted to go over that and just be completely transparent about the shop um people probably think that the shop earns a lot of money 
it does some days some days you, you can't keep up with the shop sometimes the shop will do you know you get five people in and you'll do three four hundred quid and it'll be brilliant everyone's laughing 10 15 sales in a day whatever it is but sometimes um you'll go all week last week i think we did 30 quid or something stupid like that all week and it's like if you're trying to feed your family off of 30 quid you're going to struggle right <laughs> so yeah it's a good job we've got online um and that was always the plan anyway to have the online as the main source and then just have that this is a hub um one for storage and two it gives the online shop a little bit of credibility if you've got a personal hub um and it's fun to film for the youtube videos you know what i mean i don't do it enough i don't talk about the shop enough on these um if there's anything else you want to hear about the shop if you want me to do a full video on the shop uh let me know it would be i should do it anyway because it's kind of my little like i, I put a lot of effort into the shop even though it doesn't return much it is a little bit of a, a joy point a little bit of a pride and joy for me because it is cool anyway this go over what i've been doing and why the business is working without the shop working right we're mixing up where we're filming it we are out in the hallway sat on some dirty uh clothes because i just want to mix it up um but yeah let's talk about what i've been up to so i've got a mate um i'll pop his whatnot handle up here um copper top clobber he's called called charlie in real life he's um yeah he's does what not he lives local to me and you know we're pally and mates through reselling and he was telling he does all of his selling on what um vinted and i didn't touch what when uh let me slow down a little bit he told me that i've got to get on vinted and i was like no mate definitely not ebay is where it's at um, especially for my business model ebay no vinted back onto ebay was kind of what i was doing and i was thinking i can't do vinted to vinted because that's not going to work but he kept pestering me, kept pestering me, and finally I put all the shop stuff on to Vinted and it just flew out like we were doing nothing in the shop, like I just mentioned, but we would do free sales on Vinted um, in the day, which was a lot, you know, coming from the shop stock, which wasn't listed, to all of a sudden we're selling it online. It did a lot. I should have done it a long time ago, but I just stupidly didn't. He kept pestering, pestering me. Part of me thought, no, I don't want to do it, don't want to do it, and then gave in, um, and that went really well. And then recently I had a sit down um, with my mum, funny enough, and we, I'm trying to like, buy a house at the minute. And I was thinking, because my Vinted is linked to the shop. I've got the, my Vinted at, my, my handle, Vinted handle is on my billboard outside my shop. And I didn't want to like put my eBay stuff on Vinted because it's not the same vibe as the shop. Like I sell a lot of super dry and a lot of um, like cargo trousers and everyday items like casual items super dry is a good example really i wouldn't put that in my vintage shop but i put it on ebay and i didn't want to merge the two and i was speaking to mum about it and she sort of said the way you got to think of it is no one's really gonna take much notice like how many people who come in the shop on a regular basis look at our vintage probably not many i think i've had about three messages in two years from people um that are customers on our vintage about items like not many people do um i don't promote it much on my socials so maybe that's why so i thought sod it um i'm gonna load up this isn't sponsored as well i want to preface that i loaded up zip sale which is a cross listing platform and for one one evening i thought sod it i'm getting the lot up so i've got 600 600 items listed on my ebay something like that and i just thought i'm gonna get the whole lot up and just see how it goes um and yeah let's be honest i'm gonna just i've out my vinted is outdone my ebay in the last week i don't know how um i can't i think i i think i'm putting it down to the fact that i've literally listed 500 items on the on vinted bang um and they they've just done really well because there's so much on there that you're bound to sell stuff but it, it's still carried on that's what i thought in the first couple of days but it's still carried on now uh, even like last night, I think I had like three or four sales on Vinted and I haven't listed anything in two or three days on Vinted because I haven't got anything to list. So, and the reason I've stopped is because on, um, on Zip Sale, I only got 500 listings to cross list. So I've got a little, like I've ran out basically till next month. So next month I'll be able to crack on again and list even more. But at the minute I haven't listed in like four or five days and it's still like churning out two or three sales a day. Um, yeah, what are the worries with this is overselling, right? That's what I was terrified of for so long. It's why I didn't do it with the shop stuff and then I didn't do it with the eBay stuff. That was one of the reasons I was terrified of selling someone on eBay, not delisting it in time and then selling it on Vinted or vice versa. 
but with zip sale so far i've only had one mistake and that's because it disconnected from my ebay somehow so what you need to do is if you do do this is sort of every every morning really or every day just pop onto your zip sale account and make sure your ebay is connected to the zip sale website and it should cross list obviously you can tell if something sells on vinted you can go across to ebay and look at unsolds and it should be in there i have been checking that um yeah because obviously you don't want to get upset customers because you're not being able to send stuff because you've already um sold it sort of thing so yeah but i haven't done it so far that i've only had one mistake and the guy didn't care he just said oh never mind i didn't really want it anyway luckily the guy was kind of happy that i cancelled it so i kind of got away with it but yeah you can't get away with it every time so that's the only worry with it but so far it's been fine i haven't you know the the zip sale platform has worked great for me there is other ones available i'm not sure that Vo voodoo is it and seller ada i haven't used those they might be better zip sale is just the one i'm familiar with but yeah um i haven't got a link i haven't got any promotion but just i just want to bring it to you and say this is what's happened this is what's done like this the sales today i'll pop up on screen how many sales i did on vinted over the weekend and how many sales or maybe i'll do it for the week i'll work out what i've done this week since last monday to this monday on both platforms and i'll show it here um and you can just make your own judgment if that's something you want to do um for some of you it won't be worth it you'll be doing fine on ebay and you'll think nah it's not worth the hassle um which is fair enough you know what i mean if you if it's not broken don't fix it type of thing uh, and it is extra work because you do need to be a little bit on it with the offers on both platforms and your messages on both both platforms it does kind of double the workload but for me that is worth it um because of the extra sales so yeah anyway that's my opinion on cross listing i was against it for a long time kind of still worries me a little bit but i think the extra stress and the extra worry is worth the extra sales which is that much a week i think that's worth it to me um, anyway that's pretty much all i've got to say today if you did enjoy this if you found this interesting if you found this anyway anyway uh helpful i don't know if you did hopefully you did um hit the like button subscribe and i'll see you on the next one i don't know when that'll be or what it'll be off but it'll be me blabbering again um i appreciate everyone that tunes into this i really never expected to get any views on these so it's pretty nuts that people are watching but anyway nice one i'll see you on the next one Bye bye